This is Dimitri Lascaris reporting for the Real News from the Greek island of Lesbos in the northern Aegean Sea. During the past several years, Lesbos, which lies about six kilometers off of the eastern coast of Turkey, has been on the front line of an unprecedented refugee crisis in the Mediterranean. Devastating wars, grinding poverty and punishing droughts that have been exacerbated by climate change have caused a massive migration of peoples from countries in the Middle East and Northern Africa to the south of Europe. One of the main routes by which people fleeing these wars and poverty have sought to enter Europe is through Lesbos. Today, as a result of a highly controversial agreement between the EU and Turkey, the flow of refugees into Lesbos has been greatly diminished, but some 4,000 of these persons remain on the island. These refugees are concentrated at a handful of refugee camps, certain of which are closed and which operate effectively as high security prisons. But one of these camps, which is operated by the municipality of Mytilini, the capital of Lesbos, is an open camp, meaning that residents are free to come and go pretty much as they please. This is the camp of Keratepe. Keratepe houses about 700 refugees. These refugees come principally from Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Almost all of them reach Lesbos by crossing the strait that separates the island from Turkey. They came on leaky and overcrowded boats, often with no or defective life jackets. And therefore, although the strait is narrow, many of these vessels sank before they could reach the shores of Lesbos. Hundreds of migrants, including many children, have drowned in these treacherous crossings. On July 6, 2016, the last day of Ramadan, I visited Karatepe with Sharmani Piriz of The Real News. We found a joyous and festive mood in the camp, which was not at all what we expected to see from people who have lost so much in order to eke out a new and precarious life far from their homelands. After speaking to some of the refugees at Karatepe, however, we learned of the dangers to which they were exposed and the suffering that they have endured in order to win a chance at a dignified life. This is Dimitri Lascaris for The Real News. I'm at the Karatepe uh, refugee camp in Lesbos, Greece. And uh, here with me this evening is a young lady by the name of Tatwa of Syrian origin who has come to Greece from Pakistan. Thank you very much for talking to us this evening. You will come. So why don't you uh, just explain to us uh, how you ended up coming from Pakistan to Greece? Uh, from Pakistan, uh, I went to Turkey. Uh, I stayed in Turkey one year. Even I, uh, I was trying in this one year to come to Lesbos to Greece. Um, the smugglers, they twice they took our money and they just uh, disappeared. These were these were smugglers in Turkey. Yes, in Turkey. But uh, the third time there was a smuggler who is like um, Syrian, like he was uh, from almost the same village or like this. So he helped us and uh, he just sent us. Here. And how much money did, they, did the, the smugglers, the first two times when they didn't bring you across, how much money did they take from you? The first time it was uh, almost $5,000. Uh, and the second time it was like, we gave him uh, things like, uh, my, our, our things that like gold, like things that mobiles, laptop like this. But even again, he just took it and uh, ran away. And, and the third time when you actually came across, how much did uh, you have to pay for that crossing? The third time when I came here, uh, he took almost, it was uh, two, two, uh, $2,000 like this. And you, you came across in a small boat? Yes, it was in a small boat. There was about around uh, 50 to 55 people in the boat and we came by sea. And the boat made it all the way across, it didn't sink at any point? It was, no. It's and were you, did you travel with family members? And if so, uh, what family members were in the boat with you? Yes, uh, the, uh, my mother was with me and two sisters. And they all made it here safely, are they here in the refugee camp with you? Alhamdulillah, yes. And so now you've been here for how long? Now here it's uh, three, uh, three months and a half. And how have you found the living conditions here at uh, Karatepe? Uh, it's, uh, I appreciate uh, whatever they are doing for us 
and uh, really whatever they are doing it's too much we can uh, fi we could find a life uh, everything was fine no problems alhamdulillah where do you ultimately uh, hope to go wherever that we can find a peace life that's it and why did you leave uh, pakistan uh, for syrian people it was problems like even they were asking about syrian people that we, why are we leave, living there for what purpose mm -hmm. so we left well I, I wish you the best of luck in uh, in your new life Thank you for thank you for speaking. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. I'm here uh, this evening with a gentleman by the name of Hussam, uh, who I understand has come from Iraq. Thank you very much for speaking to us. And so, why, why don't you just take a moment to explain to us how you ended up uh, coming from Iraq uh, to Lesbos? Why or how? 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 Uh, well, from Iraq, I traveled to north of Iraq, Erbil, in the name of the city. I took a visa to Al to, to to Turkey, Istanbul. And for Istanbul, I stayed for two days in the hotel. And, and then the guy who got us here uh, brought us to some point in Abraham, in the, in the jungle, in the forest. And we stayed until the second day um, uh, evening. I mean, 3, 3 a.m. 3 a.m. So when it's dark, no, one, no, no police in the sea. So we go and no one sees us. So we, we, went, we, went, we, went, we were in the, in the forest for two days. And then we launched to Greece at 3 a.m. and we arrived at the beach of Greece at 6 and half a.m. and there was a helicopter recording us uh, and uh, a Greece emergency as well, they helped us and we had two pregnant females in the boat and plus 35 people and I was the only guy who didn't have a safety suit and I, couldn't, I don't know how to swim as well And did you have to pay uh, I, I uh, in order to come across on the boat, did you have to pay anybody? Uh, the guy who, who who drives the boat doesn't have to pay anything because he drives, but the rest have to pay. Uh, for me, I paid one thousand, one thousand dollars. And the boat made it safely across. There was no well, sinking. Uh, it didn't go straight to the point. No, it, go, it goes like this, and the motor stopped twice. So in the middle of the sea and the, uh, the darkness. So we were we were just kind of I, I, for me. I was scared because I didn't have safety uh, suit. So I could almost like drown. I don't know how to swim. So how long have you been in Lesbos now? I, uh, I arrived at the beach at uh, 13th or 29th of June. I'm not sure, but it's been like more than one week. And, uh, and why did you leave Iraq? Because I want to, well, for many reasons. Not only because uh, we have uh, like a miserable life, but Iraq has no future. And you know what happened last two days in Iraq. How many people died? Yeah, yeah. It, just life is not like not safe there. Are you, are you yourself a, a Muslim? I, I am Muslim. And uh, are you Sunni? Are you Shia? Yeah, but I I don't believe in this stuff. We are all human. Yeah. So that it wasn't because of any fear of persecution of the fact it that was, you're Sunni. It was. You can say it was. I am Sunni. I am I am threatened by Shia, and I am threatened by ISIS from this side also. So my life is uh, in danger. Yeah. And so how do you feel about uh, the experience you've had here, the, here so far? Yes. Well, I'm enjoying the life here. I am, I am working with this organization called HSA. I am helping them all day long from 10 o'clock until 5 a.m. voluntarily. So I am here new, so I'm just making friends. And I'm translator for them. I translate with people here. Um, yeah, I'm just enjoying this life. So I'm just curious, how do, you, how do you know English so well? Well, I am self-taught. I didn't finish school as well. Because I told you, I didn't even finish high school. I first class, first grade, and I left it. But when I was 13, I used to like talk properly, pro properly English. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, and uh, we wish you the best in your future endeavors. Thanks, sir. Thank you. And this is Dimitri Lascaris for the Real News.